everyone, put your hands together for these wonderful, brave soldiers, these amazing soldiers. So I'm going to ask, and I'm going to start on, who has the mic? We'll start with you. I'd like you to introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself and tell us why you're running for office. Good evening, everyone. I'm James Butler. I want to thank you, Ray C. <laughs> Appreciate, uh, get my appreciation for all my supporters coming out today. And I'm running because I believe it's such a crucial time in DC history that we can't wait four more years for a new mayor. I candidly believe if DC continues to go on the path that it's going, that it will literally careen out of control for everyone except for the rich. I believe DC needs a modernized rent control bill on DC's council desk. I also believe this, that DC council and the mayor must obey the will of the voters. All right. If there's a resolution that we spend money on, DC council should obey the will of the voters. In addition to that, I believe that we need comprehensive reform when it comes to homelessness, and I'll get into the nitty gritty of that. Uh, also, shoring up our public safety apparatus east of the river. Uh, in addition, to more income-based housing. And so I'm going to let someone else say a little bit. We appreciate your passion. And I, did, like passion. I did take your admonition when you said you can't uh, trash your opponent. So I, I revised Please do. We're going we to keep it. We're going to keep Oh, I'm going to send you to the council's office. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey. Come on, hey. Get some energy in here! Hello, my name is Jamie Sycamore. I'm running for the DC Council in Ward 1. Who's here from Ward 1? Okay, we got a couple! Yay! <laughs> so I'm running for the DC Council because Ward 1 works hard for the district. It is time for the district to start working hard for the people of Ward 1. For so long, their voices have been ignored. It's time to go back to true constituent services. That is at the heart of every single decision that we as a council should have to make. We are responsible not to corporations, but to you. You are the ultimate voice. You are our boss. You are the ones who need to guide us in our decision-making process, and right now it is not working for anyone in Ward 1, and certainly not in the District of Columbia. Hello. Hey, yes, thank you. So I am here today to say that we need to have a little bit of a change on the council, and I'm here to have to bring that common sense progressive reform. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas O. Oh. I'm running for United States Congress of Right in Virginia, in Virginia's 8th District. Uh, my opponent is Don Byer. If you forget who I am, just go to the ballot. I have the shortest name, or it says O oh, right there. It's pretty easy, you can't forget it. I'm also the youngest candidate um, across nationwide. I decided to run for Congress as recently, about six months ago. I just left the military and I served uh, about eight years and moved back here. I'm a local uh, Northern Virginia DMV product, public school uh, product as well. But you know, I, was, I saw the lack of representation that was uh, shown. Um, you know, I want to be a voice in the military. I learned to, that you're supposed to work for your subordinates and your supporters don't work for you. Um, I want to be a voice for minorities. I want to be a voice for the LGBT. I was marching in the Capitol Pride Parade. I actually was one of the first special operations officers to actually enforce a new transgender policy, to enforce equality in the, um, America's military. And also, I wanted to make sure that politicians are not being bought. I'm the only, probably the only candidate. Uh, politicians are not being bought. And that's how I distinguish myself. I do not take any PAC money at all, any corporate money, and they're even good PAC money. And I think I do that. Uh, actually, I do that because I want a government that represents individual citizens and not special interests or corporations. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Petzar, and I was raised in D.C. So can you put your hands up if you're a native Washingtonian? Can we give it up for our native Washingtonians? Let's give it up for ourselves because there's not a lot of us left. So I think it's really important to have somebody on the council who's from D.C., is a D.C. public school graduate, and cares about the long-term viability of all Washingtonians, newer residents who we like, but also long-time residents and veterans of the city. I'm running for the Ward 3 seat on the council against Council Member Che, and I'm glad to be here once again on the Ask Ray Scene Show, so thank you guys for having me. Thank you for coming. You are next, my love.
You gonna need my help? Okay, team, work makes the dream work. Okay, I, you want me to hold it? Yeah, hold this. Oh, okay, okay. So you'll be my mic. I'll be your mic. So I'm all about, my name's Dustin Cantor. I'm the only one here today that will be on the ballot for mayor of Washington, D.C. I'm an independent. And I'd like you to start by reading the poet B.L. Jack, who's right there in the corner. Uh, this poem, as my mother taught me, whenever you show up somewhere, uh, always come with something. Last time I gave you a button, so this time I'm going to give you a bracelet. So I'll give you a bracelet as you write, uh, read this poem. All right, I will. I turn no gifts down, but I don't endorse anyone. <laughs> And I never knew the rainbow could be present in human faces until I saw her skin sparkle. Once she wiped her face after crying, moonshine of tears. In all my years of living, I have ever been seen such beauty. All right, and I'm gonna hold the blank for you. Okay, you want me to put this down? Wait a minute, you, you want a whole lot to children to come up with protections. All right. You gonna give this, okay, you gonna wrap me up? Uh, okay, okay. That's beautiful. I sure will. All right, so my name is Dustin Cantor. Uh, some people call me DC, those are my initials. You can look for it on the ballot. And there's three things that I enjoy teaching. Uh, one is entrepreneurship, the second is healthy eating, and the third is meditation. Uh, I support entrepreneurs because I am an entrepreneur. I have working knowledge in three industries as a labor-ready moving and storage business owner, a bagel shop owner, and someone who's built software. I've hired over 50 people in the last 15 years as an adult. I'm 33 for those that are interested in how old I am. So I'm a fourth generation DC resident, born in Silver Spring, grew up in Rockville. And the big vision for Washington DC that we have set forth is to design and create our own DC. And that begins with taking the property at the site of RFK along the banks of the Anacostia River and setting it aside for the future of our children, making an education campus that is a college-style campus for kids and not selling it out for rich people who want an amusement park along the Anacostia River. All right, thank you. So next, my beloved. Top that. I'm giving bracelets. <laughs> Be yourself. Right. So good evening. My name is Dion Reeder, and I am I am also a third generation Washingtonian. I am fortunate. I'm married to my beautiful wife Stephanie. Married for six years. We have a wonderful daughter. We've been together 19 years. We have a wonderful daughter who's 26, and I have the highlight of my life, a five-year-old granddaughter. I know what it's like growing up in D.C. through gentrification. I know what it's like to understand when you sell your homes in the District of Columbia for many reasons and can't afford to come back and live here. I know what it's like for people who work in the district who can't afford to live in the district. I've actually graduated from D.C. public schools, went on the way to college and came back home. I've done several things. I've worked in the on cap in Congress or legislative as a legislative staff assistant. I work for the mayor's office under Mayor Williams. I work in the nonprofit sector and most recently I'm a restaurant owner. I hire DC residents. If it wasn't for the fact that my parents purchased their home many years ago, my sister and I, along with my wife, we would not afford to be able to live in Columbia Heights. So I'm blessed. So when people ask me the question, why am I running? I'm running because I want to be able to have the same opportunities for me and Ward 1 throughout the entire city. We have to make D.C. a city that works for everyone. Four quick, quick things, and I'm going to sit down. Y'all let Dustin create a bracelet, so y'all going to let me say four things. <laughs> One, I graduated from Th Theodore Roosevelt. I told you that. We had trades in my school. So I believe that in order for us to be, create opportunities for our young people, we have to create trades and put them back in our school. Not just the building trades, but the IT trades as well. We hire people outside of the country for jobs that do not require a college degree. How about if you were able to graduate with a certification and put you right in place in the middle class population? If my parents were living today, they will be 87 and 89 and they will want quality of life in their home. We talk about making our homes baby proof. Well, how about senior proof? In addition to that, and many of them don't want to go in senior homes. 
but we do not treat our seniors the best we can. We're doing, I'm not knocking our council members because I appreciate them. I'm married to the wonderful woman that I love today because of the council that we had. So what I'm saying to you is, the other thing that's important, I am a small business owner and I hire DC residents. For me, no offense to Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania, but we gotta put DC residents first. So when we talk about paid family medical leave, I am in support of paid family medical leave. I'm not in support of 65% of the hardworking resident of the District of Columbia money's going outside of the district. I'm not in support of that. Fourth thing that I think is really important, and I'll say it and then I'll pass the mic, and I want us to understand this. We talked about education, we talked about affordable housing, talked about small businesses. Oh, I didn't, that's it. We have to have small businesses. The business community cannot be the enemy. The business community hires. The fourth largest employee of DC residents is the business community. We should know that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hold on, switch out with me. I love politicians. <laughs> Baby, I got plenty of win. Go on. Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Bakesha. I'm running for the Ward 6 seat here in DC. Um, my, the incumbent that I'm running against tonight, Charles Allen, unfortunately, I guess, wasn't here. Um, so one reason that I'm running is because I show up. I want to be, I want to be a council member that talks to everybody, that shows up. Somebody that doesn't take it for granted just because we're in D.C. Um, little secret, Racine, you said this is a safe space. So I'm a Republican. So I'm running as a Republican in D.C. because... And we welcome you. Thank you. It's my second time here, and no one's thrown anything at me yet. But with all due respect to council... <laughs> yeah, excellent. Looking forward to it. I'm, I'm pretty quick. You know, with all due respect to uh, council member Silverman that was here, um, D.C. is a one-party town, and because of that, we have a lot of groupthink. We have a l fewer ideas, less accountability, and I want to change that. You know, when it comes to crime, we see a rise in homicides this year. Yeah. And why is that? It's because our relations between our police officers and our community are getting worse. And that's because only 15% of our police officers live in the district. Well, don't we want our community policing ourselves? We want people living here. We want to recruit from within. We want to provide affordable housing. And we have to get rid of stop and frisk. Why do we still have stop and frisk? It doesn't make sense. And no one on the council is doing anything about it. When it comes to teachers, we lose a lot of good teachers every year because they can't afford to live in D.C. So let's make sure it's affordable to them. We want people that are spending their lives improving our, improving our community, working with our kids, to live here, to enjoy D.C., and when we have that, we're going to have better relations, we're going to have more people wanting to be in D.C., and those things are important. I'm running as a Republican because I believe in community, and I believe that, they're re that a new idea and fresh perspective on the council is going to do that. You know, one, the one last point that everybody is surprised with, I see a couple of the decrim now buttons here tonight. <laughs> I'm fully supported decriminalization sex work, and the council member I'm running against <laughs> is silent. He hasn't moved the bill. Is not bringing it to the floor, and the question is why? Why are we doing that? No one's asking those questions, and so I feel like we need somebody to hold council members accountable. Thank you. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tim Willard. I am the Green Party candidate for Montgomery County Council at large. Uh, I am running to try to build an economy that is sustainable, an economy that will not destroy nature so our children and grandchildren have a future. I am running to build a community where everyone feels safe, regardless of whether they're immigrants or natives, regardless of their background. And I am running <coughs> to try to build an alternative to the one-party rule we've had. There has not been anybody but a Democrat who's been elected in Montgomery County for the last 15 years. And no matter how good the party is, one party rule invariably leads to a government that is lazy, it leads to a government that is not responsive to the people, it leads to a government that responds to money instead of people. Uh, and I'll give you a good example. Just about a month ago, there was a young, unarmed black man who was shot to death by the police in the streets of Montgomery County. Um, even though he had nothing to do with the reason why the police were called. 
uh, the police officer who responded said his jacket was ripped and so he, he was suspicious of him. Now, this is not supposed to happen anywhere, but it's definitely not supposed to happen in Montgomery County. And uh, um, in, in the time since then, I have not heard a single other politician running for office in Montgomery County who has said a word about this. But I guarantee you that as long as the Green Party is around, we will make some noise about injustice. We will make some noise whenever an incident like this happens. And we will try to hold people's feet to the fire. Now, we have a long way to go before we become a viable alternative in Montgomery County. But I, I, I think that everybody, everybody who hears this in Montgomery County, any vote for the Green Party is a vote to build a, a good alternative to the Democratic Party. And that's why I run it. Thank you.